What is going on, you beautiful stars? RTS and Alva here, and welcome back to our Road to Champions series as we finally enter Operation Void Edge. Now, you've probably been able to tell already that this video is going to be in a slightly different format compared to our previous ones, and there's a reason for it. Now, in my previous videos, you may have picked up that I probably include about three to four games max in each one, where I edit down and we talk over where it went wrong, where it went right. Now, the issue which I've had with this one is that placement games alone is 10 matches, which would mean it would drag out three episodes just on placement matches. You don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. So what I've done is I've chucked it into a highlight reel, which is brilliant for me because it allows me to actually just talk to you guys for once. I want to speak about how I feel the games went. I want to speak about my channel, where I want it to go, what I want to do with it. And I also want to speak about other works which I have in the pipeline. So grab yourself some sweets, get a nice little drink, a cup of tea maybe, sit back and just relax. And let's hop straight into it with how I feel the games went. So how do I feel the games went themselves? Well, they went fine. We ended up coming out with a positive win-loss ratio, which is always brilliant. But my performances were... <laughs> consistently average throughout I feel that I had two standout games two games where I was way below par and six games where I played average at best now if you watched the midweek upload where we discussed our aims for Operation Void Edge then you would have heard me say that I want to be high gold to low platinum and in order for me to hit those targets I need to learn how to become more consistent and watching the games back I think the main issue for me and why I can't perform at the same level game in game out is down to three factors which have a knock-on effect on each other those three factors are operators map knowledge and my role in relation to the operator side I still have no idea who I played best with I'm starting to narrow it down to a couple of operators on attack and defense but the operator I played depends on the map which is where the factor number two map knowledge comes in Knowing where cameras are, where each bomb site is located, etc., are all aspects of the game I'm still learning. Granted, it's massively improved since we started this series, but there is still so much to learn. The issue with map knowledge is that it has a knock-on effect on how I play, which comes into our third factor of role. When I'm confident and know the map inside out, like I do with Outback now, I play as a roamer, and I'm very confident in doing it. However, when it's a map I'm not too sure of, I change into an anchor support role which at times just doesn't suit me. So we need to learn the maps inside out, which would then allow us to discover our best role in-game, which therefore helps us with our selection of operators who suit my playstyle. You still following me with all this? So what I'm going to do is turn my focus onto map knowledge. I think if I do that, then other factors will just fall into place. So what I've started doing is going on the Siege website and kind of going for each camera spot per map, which is obviously on the ranked circuit. After that, I go into a private match. I just roam around either as an attacker or a defender and try and come up with different tactics and routes I can take. So I really do hope that you guys will start seeing improvement this season. Now, I want to chat about my channel and what my aims and purposes are. If you can cast your mind back, I mentioned in the very first episode that I want to be able to share my passion for this game with you all. And I hope I've been doing that in each episode I've uploaded. However, there's another reason as to why I upload. And it's a subject which I've realised more and more over the past couple of weeks. And that's the fact that console players don't get enough of the spotlight in this community. I mean, there are some seriously talented players out there who just don't get the credit they deserve. And I think it's down to them playing on console. Look, I understand that the competitive scene is on PC like it is for most games. And there are certain things you could do on PC that you can't on console. But that doesn't mean the content being uploaded is of less quality. In fact, there are times I think it's even better than what I see from PC players. My point is there's no reason why someone on console can't be the next Macy J, Bolo or Pengu, and that's the purpose of this channel. But this doesn't just apply to Siege, which is why I'm introducing you to the Crafty Sparrow 27 and Mr. Strange. Both of these gentlemen I know outside of gaming, and I'm very fortunate to be able to call them my best mates. And one of the reasons why we get along so well is that we have the same passion for console gaming and gaming in general as each other. I highly recommend subscribing to both of them as the content they release is of the highest quality. If you're looking for someone who's a fountain of knowledge on all things survival and wants to see him struggle on the latest titles coming out like Stranded Deep like I do, then look no further than the Crafty Sparrow 27. If you want news on all things Perfesta and want to go on great adventures across skies, seas, lands, planets, then Mr. Strange is your man. Best thing about it all, we have a group channel. 
That's right, myself, Crafty, and Mr. Strange have created a channel called The Nerd Herd. And it's an idea which has been floated around in all of our heads for about a year, year and a half. In fact, being honest, I think the idea of Nerd has probably been around longer than the thought of any of our own channels. I think I can speak on behalf of Crafty and on behalf of Mr. Strange when I say that gaming is an escape from the real world. And, you know, all its stresses which comes with it, which is what the Nerd Herd is about. We want to be uploading a variety of games and doing a bunch of live streams for you all. So when you have that hard day and need cheering up, we're there ready for you. But the Nerd Herd isn't just us three. It's all of you. We want you guys to contribute. Tell us games to play. Give us games to review if that's what you want. We're going to be starting a podcast soon, so comment down below about what topics you want us to discuss and everything. I just I cannot make it clearer that the point of the Nerd Herd is that you guys contribute as much as we do. We want to create a community, and we can't do that without you. So head over to the channel and make yourselves part of the herd by subscribing, and be ready for some seriously saucy content. Well, enough about the content from the Nerd Herd. I want to discuss the content on this channel. Now, at the moment, we've just been uploading our Road to Champion series with a couple of different videos here and there. You know, the Game of the Week and our End of Operation review on Shifting Tides. Obviously, Road to Champs will always remain our main series until that moment where we hit Champion Division, but we're way off that, so we don't have to even worry about speaking about it and what's to come after that. But when I first started Siege, I wish I saw more videos like Top 5 Defenders and Top 5 Attackers to Use, as well as more tips and tricks videos like what operators work well together, what ones work best on certain maps, and who counts as who, which is what I plan to start bringing to this channel. I know how rough it can be being brand new to this game, as there is so much to take in. From gadgets, to gun recoil, to the maps themselves, to camera spots, a lot. It's it's complicated, Siege, we all know that. And going on some of my placement matches, there's a fair few new faces to this game which could do with that help in hand. But I do need to discuss with you guys something that I'm struggling with, as I mentioned about creating new content. And let's be fair, I'm sure many of you do as well. And that's finding the time to make videos. Myself, I work Monday to Friday, 7am till 5.30pm. The same as the Crafty Sparrow and Mr. Strange. But most days you're leaving your house by 20 past 6 in the morning and then you're leaving work by 6pm. By the time I get back, I've got to squeeze in 3 or 4 games during the week and then try to edit and record the audio all before the weekend. Wow, what scumbag Arsenal. Why would Arsenal make an announcement? God. Mm. Anyway, look, I'm still new to this. So my time management isn't amazing, that's granted. And of course, I'm new to editing and you know doing the thumbnails, everything. And it all takes time compared to what it probably will do in about a couple of months. But I will improve. I mean, already I'm becoming more efficient and effective with editing, as well as pre-planning videos during my working days so that when I get home, I know exactly what my target is. So another aim for this year is to get more than one video out a week, and I promise you that will happen, and we'll start becoming consistent with at least two to three videos a week. We are finally in the last game of our placement matches, and I've got to say that I completely forgot how long these ten matches can take. I still feel drained from it. It's got to be the worst part of a new season coming out, surely. I mean, in relation to the game itself, I was gutted. I played really well throughout, but the team just wasn't at the same standard as I was. And even though we went 2-0 up, we did end up bottling it and losing 5-3. Which was a fair result, based on how everyone else was playing. But again, I just want to show that when I know a map, I'm brilliant when it comes to finding routes to get to each area. And I cause havoc to the attackers and delay their pushes, as well as finding kills along the way. So that is why it's become my main focus. I want to let the final clip play out for a specific reason. Um, I was having a debate on Reddit the other day with some people in the Siege community and we all kind of agreed that by the end of it sometimes you're just better off ignoring the teammates you're paired with, muting them or whatever you want to do and just trusting yourself because there are times when no callouts are better than bad callouts and that's a fact and here's the proof. Go around, go around, go around, to the left. Mmm, my god. Bro, you're meant to be covering me. So, as I said earlier, we lost this game. But it is now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the moment of truth. Where did we finish after our 10 placement games? 
let's find out. Was it copper, bronze, silver, gold? Well, this links in perfectly with question of the day. Where do you guys think I finished? Let me know down in the comments before you carry on watching this video. And before you start typing in copper, you're not funny and I'm not that bad, so don't insult me. Bronze I could understand, but you know, copper's a bit harsh. If you guess silver, then congratulations, you are wrong. We ended up in gold three, which I'm actually quite pleased about, as I was expecting silver two, one at max. Well, that's the end of the video. Join me next week and as we can officially start our climb to champs in Operation Void Edge. If you did enjoy the video, then make sure you leave a like, and while you're there, subscribe. If you want to keep in the loop with when I upload, as well as see some sneak peeks for upcoming videos, then follow me on Insta. If you want to ask me some question about myself, Siege, or chat in general, then follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to the Crafty Sparrow 27, Mr. Strange, and of course, the Nerd Herd channel. Thanks for all your support. You've been smashing it with likes and views, so keep it up. Anyway, I love you all. Goodbye!